to create uh, a DEM file for a height map uh, using government publicly available data. Uh, I'm going to modify that and um, prep it in Photoshop and then bring it into Blender, use it as a displacement map and, uh, and as a color map. Um, and the result will look something like this. Uh, if I show this image here, this is a DEM file. Um, GIS or Geogra <clears throat> Geographical Information Systems, that's like the government, that's like, I don't know if government, it's the standard uh, mapping kind of industry. Uh, it's super complex, um, highly accurate. We're using that data, but we're <clears throat> just creating a pretty picture, so we don't need the, the accuracy. Um, anyway, but this, we're going to get one of these images. Uh, we're going to create one of these. We're going to bring it into Photoshop and um, tweak it from there and prep it for Blender and then bring it into Blender, um, use it as a displacement map, and then also use it as a color map. Um, so I'll jump into here. Um, so <clears throat> first off is getting that DEM file, that height map, and I got it from here, earthexplorer.usgs.gov. Um, you basically come into the map. As you see, I'm clicking around. You can clear these out. Um, I will go into the Sierra Nevada Mountains um, right here by Yosemite, and I'll start clicking. And um, as you can see, it's adding points. I can delete these points here, or I can come into here and do Use Map, and it will just add the four points in the viewport doesn't really matter. Um, we just basically need an area. So I'll do here. And <clears throat> then we go into data sets. Under here, and, and there are these four tabs across the top. That's what we're going for. So search criteria is here. Data sets, you go into digital elevation. And then under here, you click on SRTM and you do the one arc second global. Now that's all we need. Now what this is going to do, this data set, has a bunch of images and those images will, it will show all of the images required to cover this entire uh, area. So it might be, if the image happens to be this size and it's in one, it will just show one. It might show two, it might show, you know, however many. Um, so uh, we'll go here, there's no additional criteria. We go to results and there we go. Okay, so sure enough, let me just turn, this is a good example. Um, so there's three of these, Im uh, there should be four, but there's not, I'm not sure why, but, um, but this is, this is showing, uh, this is a great example of, of, um, that kind of ha the hack that this is, but, um, basically you'd need to download three images or four images, merge them together. Um, we're not doing that now, um, but you, you could do that if you wanted. I'm actually going to delete this. Um, actually let's. Let's pick, yeah, let's delete this one. We'll do, we'll do this one here. And um, so that is this one. So this is the image we want. So first off, we take a screenshot here and we're just gonna, this is a hack, but I, I, uh, um, I'm not sure how else to do it. Oh, sorry, I had this one before. Um, paste it in there. And we're just gonna save this as a reference image. So, Actually, hold on. Let me go back here. Um, I'll turn it on so we can see it. Then we'll be able to match the coordinates better. So let me try that again. Um, screenshot this. Go into here. Um, close this. New window. Paste. And that's our reference image. So now we're going to download this. So we go to download options here. Uh, and this little modal pops up. We want to hit this GeoTIFF. So we hit download. Um, and that's all the info that we need. Now we're going to go into um, Photoshop and stay in here for a minute. So here we go. And I'm going to pull these up side by side. Now, yeah, this is a little bit hacky, but this is how, this is how I figured out how to do it. So here's our height map. And you can see it's really dark. I'm going to go Command L, and you'll see that all the information is down here, right? So I'm going to bring this down. I don't want to do auto levels. Typically, I would do auto levels, but I don't want to do that right now. Um, and I'll show you why in a second. So I come down here just to get closer, and I hit OK. 
and you can see the data kind of showing up here. If I do Command L again, and you'll see that the data is here. Now, if I hit Auto, it cuts into the information. So see there's information outside of these parameters. I actually don't want that. Um, so I'm going to do Command L again. This one looks like we have some black in there, but we really want to try and stay away from all black or all white. So I'm going to bring just close to that edge. And we can see we're safe there. So I could bring even a little more, but that's, that's we don't want, for this process, you don't want total white or total black. Um, looks like we do have some total black, but anyway, the other problem you see here, so these contrast levels are about the same. The other problem you see here is this is one to one, and this is a not, so we need to fix that. And I'm not sure how to do that in, um, uh, on that USGS site. It's just the download that it gives me. So here's the workaround. I come here, click on this, and I see it's 730 by 916. So we need that ratio. So I do 916 divided by 730, and you see it's 1.25. So that ratio is what we need. So come into here to this image, double click to unlock it. Um, we go up to canvas size, and I say the width is one, and then the height should be times 1.25. There it is. We say great, and that's it. Now, if we bring this down to here, so lock in, Command T, hold down Shift, stretch this up to there, enter, and we're good. So now we have everything. That's that's this is pretty much done. In fact, um, actually, I'm going to shrink it a little bit just because my computer is kind of slow. Um, so I'm going to change this. I'll do this by um, divided by 1.6. Okay, just to shrink it a little bit. Okay, great. There we are. Now I'm going to um, go up here, file, export, click export, and we'll call this a, a height. Okay. So that's it. So now we have our height map. Um, we're almost done. Now, now, while we're here, let's do the color, uh, uh, the color, um, the color map. So I'm going to go into here. I go to gradient map, and you see it's white there. That means it's probably the mode has changed to grayscale. So we want to open this up in RGB. Don't merge. Now we have our gradient map here, and uh, hopefully you're somewhat familiar with these. And you can see it changes all. You know, it changes these colors. What we want is if I have these presets down here, we basically want something with a lot of detail. Um, and as you see here, these start to get a lot of detail. And I, I have these preset. Um, actually, let me show you where I got those. Um, so yeah, you can get any, you basically just need a color palette. You can get those anywhere online. This site, Pauline, this guy is awesome. It's, a, it's this algorithmic um, uh, basically tool that, uh, it, it, it's phenomenal. Um, I'm actually not going to use it here just because uh, it's faster this other way, but here's, we have six colors, and that's what we're going for. Um, and if, if you come back here and you see what I've done in these palettes, there's 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100%. So you can just click these, add a new um, a little color node. Um, the other one you can go to is this uh, coolers.co, and there's all these palettes. I actually grabbed this one this one and this one for the demo um, and I've added them in here as you can see um, all along here so and and yeah like something like this there's not really much contrast this one's cool there's a lot of different detail um, and you really want this kind of disparity of detail in there because that's going to be the the differentiator on the, the colorization so I'm gonna do a couple of these we'll do image um, sorry, we'll do file, um, export, click export, and we do, what do we call it, a color one. Um, let's just do a couple of these, I guess. Um, still saving, okay. Um, come back into, oh, come back into here, and scroll back down. I've saved these again, and we'll do, um, that one's great. So we do okay. And we'll do file, export, click export, and 
be color two. Cool. Now we're we're done. Now we're ready to jump into Blender. Um, so I'm gonna open up Blender, and we're three five, which came out last week. So new file, delete, um, shift A, and I'm going to create a plane. Now uh, come up here to item. We know this was one. The ratio is one point two five. So we know that's right. <clears throat> so our ratio is right. Now we just scale that up to whatever we want. Let's just scale it to there. That's fine. Um, uh, scale a little more. Okay. So here's our plane. And basically what we need to do here is add um, a texture to this plane. And I'm going to come down here to the shader editor. So I click here. I click new. And there we go. We have a texture. This is the same thing as if you come down into here and you add this uh, texture, right? So it's, they're identical. So what I want to do, though, I want to I want to add an image texture to this. So I'm going to do Shift A, search image. There it is. I'm going to bring this color into the base color, and then I'll open that up. And I'm going to go to Document Blender Map Test Two. Oh, there it is. And it was AAA height was the one. Now, if I come over to the rendered view here, there we are. We have exactly what we wanted. I'm going to do Shift A. I'm going to add a light. I'm going to add a sunlight um, for now, and we'll tweak that in a minute. Um, but there we go. That's that's the step one. Um, so we actually don't want this as an image. We want this as a displacement. So I'm going to. Shift D, bring this over here, and we want this to go into the displacement, uh, color into displacement. Now, that's typically what you would do with like a normal map or something like that, but we're not, this isn't a normal map, it's just a black and white uh, image. So we need to convert that to a displacement. So type in displacement, drop that in here. And again, because it's not on normal, we want it to be on height. You can see stuff changing up here, but you're not. It's not really clear on what's happening. Um, I will come down here. Here's the last step. Um, under settings here, you want this displacement. Right now, it's a bump, and bump. The way bump works is it just um, gives you light and dark areas to kind of simulate um, displacement. But this is actual displacement. So if I hit this, now you'll see things changed, and now it's dropped down. Problem is nothing has now it's just still just it's one face um, so with that we need more geometry so we go to add modifier we do subdivision surface uh, if you want the geometry to change then you keep it on Catmull Clark but we don't want it to change we just want more of it and you can see now we have some mountains um, I'm gonna increase this I'm gonna increase it I'm gonna increase it and you start to see our tool uh, first off, that scale is really high. It looked like the Alps, and this was uh, not that. So I'm going to do 0.5, shrink it down. Now, we're already at 4 on the viewport, and, uh, and, and we still are pretty low res. We're only at 1,000 faces. So what I'm going to do is give it some more uh, initial geometry. So I tab in, right-click, hit subdivide, and I'll do boom, boom, boom. That's enough. Come out. Okay, so it's still really high. Um, I'm going to change this to 0.15. Let's see. Uh, okay, that's actually more like what the desert might look like. I'm going to hit 7 to zoom to the top. Oh, jeez. Sorry. Hit the wrong key. Hit 7. And here's what we have. Um, now, let's tweak this a little more here. Let's first change the sun. So the sunlight, as you may know, works on um, it doesn't work on location it works on rotation so bring this down here and you can see the shadows start to come in um, bring it over let's see where usually you don't want to go above 90 on these um, geez what was that something like that and then um, that's actually too low let's see there we go we start to get some some light coming in from that angle 
Um, yeah, that's probably better. So we have that. Um, it's looking really good. The other thing we want to tweak here is we can bring this up to two. Um, oh, real quick, I'm going to go into here. I'm going to turn this color off. So we have that grayscale image as our color. I'm going to turn that off. Now you see it's one just kind of gray. Now it's this clay. It's the untextured or just a basic BSDF texture. Uh, so here we are. Now I'm going to, um, uh, well, here, yeah, let, let's go into the light here. And I'm going to change this angle. Watch the shadows as they soften up. The higher the angle, the softer these shadows get. And um, again, with this angle here, you can see it tweaking. Um, even as I get these longer shadows, they're, they're really soft here. And if, again, I change this angle to zero, you see how hard, harsh they are. I'm going to change this to 40, whatever it was on, and you see those really, really soften up. So that's looking cool. I have this canyon country thing going. Um, so now, oh, one thing here. Um, so you can see on this edge, there's kind of, it's distorting that edge. Um, the way the image works is we have this repeat. It's repeating that last pixel, or it's repeating the, the image itself, and so it's bringing the pixels from the other, you know, from the far edge. So if you do repeat to extend, that edge should soften up and go away. And now this just says, hey, here's the end. It's the last pixel, and it will use that, that same value. Um, so now we can add the color. So we come into here. We add this color back in. And here is the black and white. But all now we do is change this to color 1. And boom, there we, ha there we have it. Um, you can bring the sun up when you add a, a, an image on there or a, a, when you add color on there it sometimes gets a little bit too bright um, I'm sorry it gets darker and so you need to brighten up the light here um, so there we go it's pretty cool um, I also then can do shift D bring this down um, and then I'll change this one to color two and there's this map. So same kind of deal. I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to do Shift A plane, scale that to 50, and then I'll bring the Z down. And we'll just do that for now. You can put a box under there to make a, a harsher shadow um, or a more defined shadow, but this is good for now. Um, and yeah, that's it. And then you can come back into here tweak the sun, um, again, tweak that angle, get harsher shadows. And you can see the shadow here um, mirroring that um, up to this way now. And now the shadows are going that way. And um, um, yeah, so, uh, and then, yeah, the last thing is, so again, let's change this back to here. We have these really cool things, but I can also do Shift A. I can do the color work in here in Blender. Um, if I do like an invert or something, I can go boop, and now I have this one, right? So you can tweak these. These don't have to be in Photoshop. It's just uh, I guess I'm not good enough to understand how to do that. So, um, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, you have questions let me know and I will try to answer them in the comments um, but you know theoretically because we now have custom source maps to everything we can make this as large as we wanted we could print these 3d print them something like that and, and you know it could be could be pretty cool so uh, yeah so I think that's it um, again let me know if there's questions um, or if I if you have a better way to do stuff, I'm still fairly new to Blender. I'm about two months in, uh, coming from Cinema 4D. But uh, yeah, if there's something you see that uh, could be improved, let me know. Thanks.